Hey ladies, I'm back for another follow-up video to the Pinterest marketing plan video that I did earlier. I wanted to come back and look a little bit more extensively at what the plan looks like. And Heidi had a great suggestion for what she wanted to see what it looked like filled out. So I kind of wanted to go over my own plan with you for 2014 so you could see what mine's going to look like just to give you an idea of where you should be heading. Obviously, everyone's at a different point, so yours may not look exactly like mine, but I just want you to see kind of what my goals are to give you some ideas to start your own plan. So basically, I've been tracking for at least the last eight months um, of 2013. I really started going gung-ho about eight months ago, tracking, really trying to gain followers. I was at about 2,000 Pinterest fans um, earlier in 2013, and so right now my current following is as of this morning is 13,775. So I average out to about, I'm averaging out to about 800 new followers a month. And for the upcoming year, I'm not going to change that goal at all because uh, most of you probably know I'm expecting my uh, little one in June. Second child, first pregnancy. My son is adopted from Guatemala. So I know that to be realistic with a newborn this year, I just don't want to lose momentum. And if I gain momentum, great for me. Now, if this is a year where you're like, I don't have a lot of personal stuff going on, I think this is a great year for growth, then you might want to increase your follower goal by 20%. I don't know that you'd really want to go much above that because I don't know how realistic that is, especially those of you that are already maybe at less than 1,000. But my own growth for the year, you know, if you go from 2,000 to um 13,000 was, you know, a fairly high percentage rate. So you're going to kind of have to determine what you think might be realistic, doable, and then even maybe pushing yourself a little bit for the year. However, like I said, with, with expecting a little one, I'm not looking to push myself too extensively because I'm the type of person where when I don't meet a goal, I tend to freak out about it. So I, with my perfectionism, I just can't do that right now. I have to be realistic. I mean, I've actually scaled back across the board on my entire blog everything I'm doing, I'm scaling back a little bit to become more realistic about, you know, making my child a priority in the upcoming years. So you're going to want to decide what's best for you in that area as well. So I've narrowed this down into um, a daily action plan. Um, actually, it's daily, monthly, and annual. So I should have just labeled this action plan right here, which I will probably change. Um, but I kind of wanted just to have some real definite goals that you've heard the pr proverb of, how do, you, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. And so I definitely want to make sure that, you know, that we're creating realistic goals on a daily, monthly, and annual basis that we can chunk down into smaller, smaller chunks that are realistic. So when I take a look at my first one, which is daily, the three things I think are the most important are repinning 15 to 20 pins per day, tracking daily follower counts and examining the most repin pins of my own and others. So that kind of boils down to the first one, you're repinning 15 to 20 pins daily to appropriate boards across several genres. I'm going to consistently do that every day. That's what I've been doing for eight months. That's what's gotten me here. One of my mainstream, main, not going to change goals for every day is going to be that goal. That's my number one. Second one is to examine the repin pins to see content that my followers prefer. So when I do that, I go in to see the pins that I've pinned daily and just kind of look over from the day before to see what was pinned the most or repinned the most off of what I've been pinning. When I say that, I'm talking about not just my content, but all the content that I've pinned for that previous day. And then I kind of look at which categories to see which are the most repinned. Are my readers really repinning a lot of fashion? Are they really, really repinning a lot of uh, crafts or recipes? Or looking at those repin pins and saying, okay, was it because it was a multi-step pin? Was it an infographic? Was it a great photo? Was it seasonal? What really do I feel is making this a really repin pin and doing that quickly? I don't spend a lot of time doing that. And then tracking the daily follower count on the follower sheet that we'll go to here at the end. I also put that in the group today. I do not track every day right now. I've been tracking about every two to three days. So you don't have to do it every single day. It's just if you want to, I put every day in there just so that it's, you know, kind of like a gauge for you where you can kind of mathematically look back and say, okay, well, even though I went four days, I averaged 80 new followers. So that means 20 a day. Um, and I also put space on there for you to write um, notes and then just the, the posts that you think are doing the best just to write some notes, jot some things down for yourself. So tracking on that sheet. Then I'm going to go to monthly. 
Every month I want to create four to eight new pieces of content per month based on season or holiday. Um, coming across to the middle section here, I'm going to utilize that editorial calendar that I put in the group to pre-plan as many as I can, but realizing that you've got to be flexible because like I said in the video, the last video, sometimes that's last minute. So the basic monthly goal there is to plan four to eight pieces based on the editorial calendar. And again, some of them coming to me at the last minute. I'm going to try to participate in two giveaways each month and examine the statistics for those giveaways. What was my ROI? And for those of you that may not know what that means, it's return on investment. This is what all major brands look at when they're investing not only in social media, but they're spending on social media. So, you know, Procter & Gamble might say, okay, we spent this much money on um, our, our, you know, Facebook advertising, this much on Twitter advertising, this much on Pinterest, adverti Pinterest advertising. What was our return on investment? How many new followers did we gain? How did that translate into traffic for us? And so that's kind of what I'm looking for on these giveaways, is, you know, because I don't, I know I hosted one in our group this month, but there's a lot of giveaways I do where I'm not in charge of it, where I just participate um, and add links. Some of them are free, some of them I pay for. So I try to kind of examine, you know, and I note that on that daily tracking sheet when I have a giveaway going on, so that I can kind of tell, okay, obviously I was gaining more followers here because I was repinning and I had a giveaway going on. And what was my return on that investment? So right now, those of you that did the giveaway in the group, we're gaining, we've gained about 250 new follow. Most people have gained anywhere from 200 to 250 new followers for that giveaway. And so that translates into about 2.5 cents. Um, let me actually map cost that out for you. So if you spent $10, and you gain 250 new fans, you spent about four cents a fan. That is a wonderful return on investment for Pinterest, um, considering that right now on Facebook, you know what we're spending as a crazy advertising amounts to gain new followers, which is just absolutely nuts. So right now the ROI for Facebook is not very good. So I'm looking at those ROIs on those giveaways and determining, okay, what, how much am I gaining based on what I spent? How many followers were gained from each of these different giveaways I'm doing? What was the best, what were the best results? You know, there are people that I go back to again and again for giveaways because they create really great giveaways. They Now, please don't go based on the first one that I did in the group because, you know, I just had a lot going on. This is December. It's the last week of teaching for me, so don't don't base my <laughs> giveaway abilities on that one. But anyways, so I do, but I do have certain people that I go back to for giveaways because they just do such a great job and I gain so many new fans because they, maybe they switch up who's in the giveaway. And so, you know, a lot of times if you're doing giveaways with the same exact people, you're not going to gain new fans because you're not going to necessarily have, you know, a new, a new fan base because you're doing with the same people over and over again. And so your fan bases don't change. So moving on, I'm going to evaluate my monthly statistics, looking back over my daily tracking, how many followers did I gain in that month, which pieces did, that I posted, which ones gained the most repins, and why do I think they gained that, so I can learn from my statistics. You know, what, like for example, like I was analyzing a little bit in the last video, why I felt the two ingredient fudge posted much better than the crock pot macaroni and cheese as far as traffic, but yet the repins were better on the macaroni and cheese because, you know, it was a slow cooker. Did the group that I, the group board that I posted to, did that board just have, why did, you know, looking at why did I think it went viral a little bit more than the other one as far as repins? Like I said, when the other one created more traffic and kind of, you know, analyzing as we go. So just looking at those monthly statistics and then from an annual perspective, compiling all the, the, the monthly statistics into an annual kind of report for myself. And so I, what I'll do is I'll keep this monthly tracking document for each month and then I'll kind of go back over and look and see, man, when did I really gain? Were there certain months where I really gained a ton of new followers? Or was it because I was doing this many giveaways? Did I, did I change the number of giveaways? Did I change the number of content pieces I was doing on my own? Did I, where were my mistakes? You know, that's one of the best things you can do is look at your mistakes and figure out where you made them. Um, and I'm doing that for my whole blog in general right now at the end of 2013 and really learning a lot about myself as a blogger, a lot about myself as, you know, uh, as a writer, a content writer, and also about my niche, you know, where, where do I want to head? Do I want to keep posting just solely deals? So I'm really, I'm really going through a really crazy analytical time right now because of the Facebook changes and making that forcing, you know, all of us to look at our traffic and where our traffic comes from and why we're putting our time there. And, um, and how much time with a new baby can I realistically put into this or that? So 
that might, you know, help you reevaluate how much Pinterest time do you have realistically for 2014. And if you only have so much time, where do you want to focus most of that time? So then looking at um, also evaluating the annual rate of uh, investment, return on investment, sorry, return on investment from each month, you know, whether it was giveaways, whether it was, you know, I think you can pay, actually pay for advertising on Pinterest. I have not done that. Maybe we'll look at that in, in an upcoming video to see if it really works or not. Um, but, you know, look at it, looking at all that compared to Google Analytics, you know, where where did I get the traffic from? And when it was from Pinterest, what Pinterest post was it coming from? And when you go into Google Analytics, looking at the whole year and looking at all your top posts and seeing, you know, coming down, obviously some of mine are affiliate posts, but then working through all those Pinterest posts and all those content pieces and just even going into the Google Analytics Pinterest, how you acquired that traffic and um, seeing where the most traffic came from and trying to determine, you know, where did that convert for me? Obviously, um, we can't always track affiliate conversions based on Pinterest because you might have gotten somebody to the site and you may not know that their that Pinterest traffic turned into a conversion for you. That's a little bit more difficult. But I'm gonna basically compare my annual Pinterest traffic results, the most viewed posts in regard to Pinterest. I'm gonna do that here, you know, obviously in the upcoming week, and maybe I'll create another video and share that with you as well. So this is kind of what that this document looks like. And then I want to go back to the group very quickly and just show you that in um, the Pentastic group, I did share another document for you, which was the daily, um, the daily tracking document. Let me just kind of go into that here real quick. Okay, so right here what I'm saying is you're just going to basically do your follower count every day. If you want to make any notes about the repin post, the category that it was in, or maybe what quality you felt made it, highly repinned and then any extra extra notes I'll try to do this for everybody every month so that we have um, so that you don't have to create this that'll be part of the benefit of being in the group I'll create it and change the dates for every month for you guys so that you can print it out and just keep daily track and then at the end of the year um, you know really have something some data to go by for next year so again um, these are just some of the things that I wanted to kind of go over with you that I really felt just needed another video so take a look at that, create your own marketing plan, let us know, comment in the group to let us know, you know, what changes you made, things that you think. Those of you that are, are under a thousand fans or whatnot, obviously your goal is just going to be to gain following and to create content. And maybe you don't have a specific number yet, but try to come up with, you know, up here at the top, try to come up with what you think is realistic based on just the last month of you being in our group. Did you gain 200 new followers? from doing one giveaway. If that's the case, then yes, you need to make 200 a month your goal because, you know, maybe you just did the giveaway and you weren't repinning much because you knew that you didn't have enough followers yet to repin. And then hopefully it's like the snowball creating the snowman. You're going to roll it downhill. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as we go throughout the year. And maybe in six months, you need to readjust your marketing plan to be more consistent with what you've done in the last six months. Because some of you, like I said, we had one blogger start at nine. We had one blogger start at 200, where some of you were already at 6,000. So that this plan is going to look very different for each of you. And so I'm trying to, you know, hit all of you at the same time, making sure that you're setting up realistic goals for the upcoming year for yourself. So hopefully you guys are having a great day. It's Sunday, I'm getting a lot kicked out here. So, um, and again, have a great upcoming holiday weekend.